Good morning and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you joining us through live stream. We pray that you are in good health. Our gathering chant is number 475 in our Catholic Book of Worship, God whose glory reigns eternal. Our presider is Father Cecil Critch. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Morning, everyone, again, and welcome. Morning, Father. Today we offer our Mass today for the repose of the soul of Brendan Dutton, who is the brother of Philomena, who is one of our great volunteers here in the parish. So we offer um, the condolence to the family, and we pray for the repose of his soul today. And like all of these deaths and losses during this time of pandemic, the funeral will be delayed, and uh, so we'll offer this special memorial mass today. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries today, we ask the Lord to come into our hearts, to forgive us for the times we have failed to be merciful, for the times we have failed to bring healing to others. We ask the Lord's forgiveness. mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened. May our hope of resurrection for your departed servant, Brendan, also find new strength through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, 
I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of the stress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does, who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to Psalm 30, I will extol you, Lord, for you have raised me up. Praise to you, Lord 
Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Seek good, not evil, so that you may live, and the Lord will be with you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. After spending two days in Samaria, Jesus went from that place to Galilee, for Jesus himself had testified that a prophet has no honor in the prophet's own country. When he came to Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him, since they had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the festival, for they too had gone to the festival. Then he came again to Cana in Galilee, where he had changed the water into wine. Now there was a royal official whose son lay ill in Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went and begged him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, Unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The official said to him, Sir, come down before my little boy dies. And Jesus said to him, Go, your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him, and started on his way. As he was going down, his slaves met him and told him that his child was alive. So he asked them the hour when he began to recover, and they said to him, Yesterday at one in the afternoon the fever left him. And the father realized that this was the hour when Jesus had said to him, Your son will live. So he himself believed along with his whole household. Now this was the second sign that Jesus did after coming from Judea to Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We are only about two weeks away from Holy Week. And between now and Holy Week, the, the weekday re readings from the Gospel are taken from the Gospel of John. In today's Gospel reading, the court official of King Herod showed faith in coming to Jesus and asking him to cure his seriously ill son. He had walked some 20 miles from Capernaum to Cana. Jesus challenges his faith and suggests that the official's faith is dependent on his seeing great signs and wonders and miracles, in particular the sign and wonder of his son being healed by Jesus. Yet he turned out to have a deeper faith. Jesus did not go to the home of the official to cure his son. Instead, he simply said to him, go home, your son will live. In response to what Jesus said, the gospel reading tells us that the man believed what Jesus had said and returned home. The father was at being asked to trust the Lord's promise to him. He set off home without Jesus, but trusting in Jesus' word, his promise. His journey home was a journey of hopeful faith. In that sense, he represents us all. We are all called to journey in hopeful faith on the basis of Jesus' word of promise, a word that promises life. Jesus promises that those who believe in him will pass from death to life. We will only experience the fullness of this promise beyond this earthly life. Yet along the way, we can begin to experience the beginnings of the fulfillment of this promise, just as the father did when he arrived home and found that his son had recovered. Jesus works in a life-giving way in our lives during our earthly pilgrimage. That is why we are called to keep walking in hopeful faith like the father today. This royal official exemplifies the faith we all have, we all need to have a faith that is based on trust in the word of God, in the word of Jesus, and the promise of Jesus, a faith that is not dependent on miracles and signs and wonders. The Lord's word is enough for us. Our faith is based on the Lord's presence to us in his word. The Lord's presence to us in the sacraments, especially the Eucharist, is also foundational to our faith. Today, we are invited to allow the Lord's Word to guide and direct us on our way. The Lord's Word will work powerfully in and through our lives and through us to others. In the words of the first reading from Isaiah, which talks about the coming of the new temple, the building of the, rebuilding of the temple after Babylon, the Lord will create a new heaven and a new earth through us. 
Those who trust themselves to the word of the Lord will experience the Lord's creative and life-giving power at work within them. We offer our prayers of intercession today. We pray today for our Pope Francis, for Archbishop Peter, and all church leaders, that they may have the courage, wisdom, and compassion to lead the church to a fuller understanding of her mission to preach the gospel to all nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those struggling through the pandemic, those suffering financial difficulties, mental health issues, addictions, loneliness, and despair. We pray to the Lord. We pray that our Lenten exercises of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving may deepen our awareness that God is the source and strength of our life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick at home in hospitals and health care facilities and all those who provide compassionate care for them, especially our health care workers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For tender care for those who mourn the loss of loved ones and for all of the faithful departed, and today we especially pray for Brendan Dutton, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers and the quiet of your hearts today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the grace and blessings you give us every day. And we make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, we become to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Wash away our iniquities, O Lord, and cleanse us of our sin. May my sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, the Son has given himself to us as the bread of life and has poured out his blood as the chalice of salvation. Have mercy, we pray, on your servant Brendan, that the offering we make to you may be for him the source of salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial shall give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the blood, body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember your servant, Brendan, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And we pray with confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we share the peace of Christ now with one another. sins of the world have 
God, beholding what takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should, should enter, enter under my roof, my roof but, only but only say the, say the word, word and my, my soul, soul shall be healed. Be healed. A prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. Communion chant 6.4 in our celebrating song, Let Us Be Bread. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your servant Brendan, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer to Mary for help and protection during the pandemic. O Mary, o Mary you always, always shine, shine in our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. hope. We, we entrust ourselves to you, help of the sick, sick who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain. pain keeping our faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that is in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father, and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us to the cross, to the joy of the resurrection. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go now in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Have a great day. Thank you, Father, and you. Our missioning chant, number 582 in our CBW, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness. <clears throat> Burning sun.